Hello. This is the first part in creating a registration and login system. In this part, you'll learn how to create a proper table structure for the users and some useful techniques for the website. Let's begin. First off, make sure you have Apache and MySQL servers installed on your system. You can use XAMPP or WAMP and I'll be using NetBeans to build my PHP web application. It's free and good IDE. My browser is Firefox. Now, let's create the database and the table for storing users' information. I'll access MySQL server through phpMyAdmin web interface. Create new database. I'll call it R and LS short for registration and login system. Set the character encoding to UTF-8, general case insensitive. Click create. Create new table, name it users. This table will have 10 columns. Go. First column, user ID. The type is integer. The values will be stored in this column will be positive. So set the attribute to be unsigned. Assign primary key index to this column. And make the value stored in this column auto incremented. Second column, username. The type is varchar. Set the link to 50 characters and add unique key index to make sure that there is no duplicate values. Third column, first name. The type is varchar. Set the length to 20 characters. Fourth column, last name. The type is varchar. Set the length to 40 characters. Fifth column, email. The type is Vacha. Set the link to 80 characters and add unique key index to make sure that there is no duplicate values. Sixth column, registration date. The type is date time. Seventh column, pin. The type is var binary. Set the link to 16. Eighth column, salt. The type is cha. Set the length to 20. Pin and salt columns will be used together to encrypt and decrypt user's password. Ninth column, active. The type is varchar. Set the length to 32. Notice here, by default, all columns did not allow for null values. Except for this column, I will set it to accept null value. When the user activated his or her account, this column will be set to null. Tenth column, user level. The type is tiny integer. Set the length to 1. It will store positive number, so make it unsigned and provide default value to be zero for non-administrator users. Click Save. Database has been created successfully. Now let's create a new PHP project with NetBeans. File, New Project, Select PHP Category, and Normal PHP Application. Click Next. Give it a name. I'll call it R and LS. Click Finish. Right click on your project name and create new folder. Name it Includes. Click Finish. Right click on Includes folder. New PHP file. Call it MySQL connection link. Click Finish. 
Within this script, I'll define four constants using PHP define function. The first constant will be the username who has access permission to the MySQL server. The second constant will be the password for that user. The third constant will be the domain name or the IP address for the database server. The fourth constant will be the database name you want to access. You have to change these values according to your server configuration. Next, create the link object to MySQL server and save it in a variable. I'll call it dbcl, short for database connection link. In its constructor, give it four arguments, host, user, password, and the name of the database. It's better to check if the link has been established successfully. If no connection could be made, end the execution with the script and show the error. Else, it's a good idea to set the character encoding to UTF-8. That is all for accessing MySQL Server. Let's create a simple template to be used in all pages. Create a new folder, name it CSS, for holding style sheets. Right click on CSS folder, New, Cascading Style Sheet, name it Style, click Finish. Let's create a header file. Right click on Includes folder, New, PHP web page, and call it Header. Click Finish. At the beginning, start a new PHP tag and access or create a new session. Create two variables to check if the user is logged in and if the user is an administrator. Set them to be false. Now, let's access the session array and searching for the user ID. If it's set, then the user ID is already logged in. So, set the logged in variable to true and check for user level. If it is set and the value is one, then the user is an administrator. So set the admin to true. The title of the web page will be set dynamically. In other words, page title variable will be set by the page that includes the script. Create a link to the stylesheet file. Open header tag. The head of the page will be set dynamically, like the title. Create a simple description about the site. Open navigation tag. Create an ordered list. First link will point to the home page. Check if the user is logged in. Then display a link to change the password. And another link to log out. If the user is not logged in, then display a link to register, another link to log in. If the user is logged in, and if he or she is an administrator, then display a link to edit users. Open a division tag for content. That is all for the header. Now let's create the footer. Close the div of content and create footer tag. Close the body and HTML tags. That's all for the footer. Let's create a preferences file to contain 
all the reused functions and defining custom names for the resources. For now, I'll define five constants. One is a shorthand for my domain name and for my database link script, for the header file and for footer, and one for the administrator email address. I'll create a function, I'll call it between, which I'll use later for validation. This function will take three arguments. The first is the string value, the second is the minimum integer value, and the third is the maximum integer value. Next, I'll calculate the length of the string, and I'll return true if the length between the range else return false. Now let's see how to use header and footer in the home page. First off, define the page title and page header title to be used in the header before including it. Include preferences, then include the header. Show a welcome message. If the user is exist in the session, then display its full name, else display guest. At the end, include the footer. That's all. Let's see how it looks. It looks plain. Well, let's add some style to it. Right click, inspect element, click on Style Sheet Editor. I don't want to waste more time on styling, so I'll just paste the style code here to see how it looks. Then save it in the style file. On the next tutorial, I'll create a register page and sending the activation link by email. Thanks for watching.